So you've heard of raw soups. Probably the most famous are the uh, gazpacho and then, or uh, maybe a cucumber dill soup in the summer. But I'll, I'll uh, confide that we don't really care for cold soups, even though we eat raw soups every single day. Mm -hmm. So what we like is a slightly warm, you know, lukewarm soup. And we find it so comforting and so, you know, so nice, especially in the winter. So our favorite technique is um, different vegetables that we're going to blend in the Vitamix with hot water. And this is the key. Mm. So the hot water, even though it's boiled, uh, because the vegetables are cold, you know, the, the two together will uh, give a lukewarm mixture. So it's just perfect. The other way to go about it, you could use cold water, but then you'd have to then warm it up on the stove, and you would have to be at you know medium, you know no higher than medium, and you have to keep stirring so that the, the enzymes at the bottom don't cook. But this technique is so much quicker. So tonight um, I'm demoing a very nice soup for the winter. It's a sweet pea soup, creamy sweet pea soup. So first I'm going to put the, uh, hang on, I think I'm going to start, I like to start with the avocado. Because for one thing, if you put the avocado at the bottom, then it gets nice and creamy and all the vegetables will, you know, nicely blend. Whereas if you put, I don't know, a piece of celery, it might get stuck under the blade and, uh, you know, and it's a bit of a hassle to get it out. So, avo first. And you can use all kinds of vegetables, eh? but um, we've learned that maybe to feature one or two vegetables is best because if you put too many things, and especially if you have the raw soup often, it will basically taste the same, you know, and you'll kind of get bored with it. But if you do a feature, you know, like mm -hmm. a cream of tomato or a cream of uh, celery or uh, a, a cucumber soup or a zucchini soup, you know, it will just make it more interesting. You put the avocado in all of that. And sometimes I'll use, um, I, I like to use some kind of fat base to make it creamy. So it could be uh, almond milk or it could be some nuts. But avocado is, or olive oil, but avocado is the one I, I like to use the most. So you see what I'm doing now, I'm actually turning it, turning it over to make sure there's no dark spot on it. You know when it's discolored? That's actually um, rinsed oil. So... Mm -hmm. You know, it's really not recommended to consume that. I have a very sensitive digestive system, so that's, um, it took me a long time to figure out why, you know, I was literally bent over in two, it was so painful, and then eventually the light came on that it was, you know, the, the avocados. And our dog, uh, Kylo, he eats about 80% raw, and, um, when we give, he loves avocado skins. Usually I don't clean it too well because then I give it to him. <laughs> but he won't eat the uh, dark spots. Oh. So that's another indication, you know. Oh. That oh. Do you have a technique for picking out better avocados? Because I have a hard time. We just, I think what we like to do is we pick them when they're not too ripe. Mm -hmm. Because if they are, then oftentimes, you know, every time you touch it, it bruises it, right? Mm -hmm. So if they are ripe, chances are, you know, they might have those bruises. So we usually get avocados that are hard, and then or we have them at different stages. You know, we get a bunch, and then we get another bunch a few days later. So we always have some. Um, one recommendation I would uh, give is to not refrigerate your avocados when they are not ripe, because then they will really turn gray on oh. the inside. So I would really recommend leave your avocado at room temperature um, until it's ripe, and then. When it turns brown, you know, when it's darker brown, uh, th yeah, it's a brown, I mean, darker color, then I put them in a refrigerator mm -hmm. and they'll keep for about, you know, eight to ten days. Mm -hmm. So I've got my avo, so then it doesn't matter what, uh, you know, what order I put the rest of the veggies in. I guess my main question is whether I'm going to fit everything in one go or not. What you can do with this soup, um, it's nice sometimes to just put some some of the peas directly in the bowls, so then it gives a bit of texture. So that's something we could do tonight. And then cucumber. One of the cool things with the Vitamix is that you don't need to chop things super fine because it's going to do it for you. Mm -hmm. So it helps you uh, save some time. 
Whoops, I'm already running out of space. Some celery. I think I have to go ahead and blend because it's going to make some <laughs> room. <laughs> well, it depends on the bulk, you know, how much uh, density there are in your vegetables. So if you make a tomato soup, for example, you won't need as much hot water because it would, you know, it could overheat it. So I, what I like to do is put less hot water and then I test for temperature and then I'll adjust the consistency according to what I want with either cold or hot water, depending on what's needed. So I know it sounds a bit complicated, but once you, you know, once you get going with it, uh, you get the hang of it pretty quick. So, some hot water. I'm gonna make a bit of noise. I'm gonna add a bit more water, because those peas are bulky. One of the wonderful things with the Vitamix is that it makes everything so smooth. Mm -hmm. We had a regular blender for a while, and well, for a few years, but we found we had to replace it every single year because we, you know, especially when you eat mostly raw food, uh, you, give, you give it quite the workout, I think, <laughs> like four times, you know, three, four times a day. Right, so I'm going to add now green onions and some garlic. Normally I make the recipe with dill, but uh, we didn't have dill, so we're going to use fresh parsley instead. It can be just as good. A little bit of lemon juice, and then what we like to do for uh, to salt this soup, usually we will use miso. So miso is a paste, a fermented paste. You've heard of miso soup. Mm -hmm. So it's not uh, technically raw, but then it, it has developed new enzymes during the fermentation process. So, <clears throat> but I think if you're not strictly raw, you know, it's not in, wouldn't be an issue anyways. So we like to use the miso in the soup. And then afterwards, instead of adding salt, we like to add seaweed. So we put seaweed in our bowls, so then we get the trace minerals um, instead of having, you know, the, the salt that's been uh, processed. Mm -hmm. So miso and lemon juice. So now I'm really going to be careful not to put too much water with this. There we are. Hmm. How many of you have tried raw soup before? Mm -hmm. And we love them because really <coughs> they're like savory smoothies. It's so quick, you know, you know, it's easy to just fit in your schedule, no, no food prep. So, yeah, so we love our raw soup. I don't know what you do with our raw soup. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of soup recipes on my blog. There's a lot of free recipes, actually, for all kinds of stuff. So if you, you know, I really recommend you check it out. The Sunny Raw Kitchen. And then, of course, there's lots of um, recipes in my recipe books. I actually have three books. The first two books I only released in electronic format, mm -hmm. but the third one is available in both electronic and uh, hard copy. So. <laughs> <laughs> bon appétit, everyone. Thank you.